So let's review before we start today's lesson on Punnett squares. Mendel's pea plants could either have tall stems or short stems. So if, if a pea plant had tall stems, it was represented with a the allele capital T. And I know that since it's capital T, it's a dominant trait. Tall stems is a dominant trait. Or pea plants could have short stems and it is represented with an allele that is lowercase t. So because it's lowercase, I know that short stems are the recessive traits. So the first question is, what is the phenotype of a heterozygous plant? What is the phenotype of a homozygous recessive plant? And what are all the possible genotypes for st tall stems? So before we answer the first question, we have to remember that phenotype means the physical trait. So what I'm asking here is, what is the physical trait of that plant? Is it going to have tall stems or is it going to have short stems? Because the genotype is heterozygous, which means it's two different alleles or letters, one's capital and one's lowercase, it's going to represent tall stem. Why is it going to represent tall stem? Because of that capital letter. That capital letter represents tall stem, and it's the dominant trait. Now all I need is one capital letter, and it represents tall stem. Now the second question is also asking for the physical trait of that plant, but this plant is homozygous recessive. Now it's homozygous because they're two of the same alleles or letters, and it's recessive because they're both lowercase. So because of that, it's going to be short stem. Why? Because it only has the lowercase alleles, the lowercase letters, to represent the recessive trait for short stem. Now the third question is asking for genotypes. Now remember, genotypes are the combination of two alleles or letters. One letter comes from one parent, the other letter comes from the second parent. And it's asking for how do we write those letters if we represent tall stems. Now remember, to represent tall stems, you have to have at least one dominant or capital letter. Okay, so there are two answers to two possible genotypes to this. You could have a homozygous dominant genotype, that means two capital T's, or you could have a heterozygous genotype, that means a capital or a lowercase. All the genotype needs is one capital letter and it represents tall stem. It's really important to know the difference between phenotype and genotype to understand today's lesson on Punnett squares. Because if we know what the parents' genotypes and phenotypes are, we could figure out what the next offspring, what its genotype or phenotype might be. And we use something called a Punnett square to determine that. So here is a Punnett square, it's a diagram, and on the outside is where we would write the parent's information, it's genotype here, okay? And then also here it was showing a, a picture of the phenotype, it's either yellow or green pods. Now each um, box inside the Punnett square shows what their next offspring might turn out to be. So it will show the next offspring, what its possible genotype is, and what its possible phenotype is, what color pod it will have. So I'm going to show you how to use a Punnett square. The first thing that you need to do is identify the allele for each trait. So let's take a look at the example. Um, and then the first example says, in cats, a brown coat is dominant to a white coat. So in this case, brown coat is dominant, so we should get a capital letter. Now, we can use whatever letter we want, but let's use the word letter B for brown. So for the allele, we're going to use a capital B. For the trait, it will be brown coat. Now, white coat is recessive. So we're still going to use the letter B, but we're going to make it a lowercase b. And we're going to represent that as the allele for white coat. Now if you see, let's make it a rule that anytime we see a lowercase or recessive allele, let's just underline it, okay, so that we can tell the difference. Because some letters, in this case, you can see the difference between a capital and lowercase b's, but some letters, it, it, it can be hard to tell the difference. 
So anything that's recessive, just make it, um, just underline it. Now the next thing we have to do is figure out what the parent's genotypes are. So let's go back to the example. It says a cat with a homozygous brown coat it mates with a cat with a white coat. So let's take a look at this first parent. This per first parent is homozygous brown coat. Homozygous means same, so its alleles and its genotype will be the same, and it's brown coat. Now we already know that brown coat is dominant, so parent one's genotype its two letters should be both the same capital letter B. So it's homozygous and brown, same and it's capital. Now the next parent is has a white coat. So its genotype, its two letters, since white coat is represented by the recessive allele, both of its letters have to be homozygous, the same, and recessive to represent white coat. Now you're going to draw a Punnett square, and on the top you're going to write one parent's genotype. So here parent one is homozygous dominant, so I'm going to put um, a letter in each space. Then on the left side you're going to put the second parent's genotype, which is homozygous recessive, so I'm going to put a lowercase b in each space. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to fill in the inside of the diagram. And this is what the next offspring might turn out to be. So parent one is going to give um, a capital B um, in this space here. And the second parent is going to give a lowercase b. So the next offspring will, might have this genotype, capital and lowercase b. It's heterozygous. To fill in this space here, okay, same thing, the parent one is giving a capital B, but parent two is giving a lowercase b. So this is the genotype that's possible. On this box here, okay, parent one is giving a capital B, parent two is giving a lowercase b to give a heterozygous genotype. And then in the last one, parent one is get, giving a capital B, parent two is giving a lowercase b. And here's the genotype that the offspring might have. So the last thing you'll do is you're going to calculate the ratio of the possible genotypes and phenotypes of the next offspring. So to do that we're going to have to take a look at the inside of the Punnett square and this is what the next offspring might turn out to be. So here for the genotype there's only one combination they're all the same they're all heterozygous genotypes. So remember, heterozygous means it has two different alleles. Here it's one capital and one lowercase. So what does that mean when we write the ratio? You need to write heterozygous genotype. You have to write capital B, lowercase b. And 4 out of 4 means that heterozygous genotype is seen in 4 of the 4 boxes. Or you can write it as a percent, 100% of the time, um, the genotype will be heterozygous. What does this mean? This means that when these two parents, a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive cat, when they two, the two of them mate, they're going to have a kitten that's going to have a genotype of um, heterozygous. Now we're going to take a look at the phenotype. So that means what coat color is the next kitten going to have. So in this case, this box here, it's heterozygous. It has that one dominant allele or letter. So that represents the dominant trait of brown coat. Okay, all you need is that one capital letter and it'll overpower the recessive um, allele or letter. So that represents a brown coat. Same thing here, it's still heterozygous. That one dominant allele or letter will represent the dominant trait of brown coat. Okay, um, that's a phenotype. Same thing with these two um, boxes. They both have a dominant allele or letter, so they represent the dominant trait of brown coat. So how are we going to write that? We're going to write the word, the, the physical trait or phenotype brown coat. And it happens four out of the four boxes, so that's the fraction, or it happens 100% of the time. So what does this mean? That means 
these two parents, their next kitten will have brown coat. There's no other option. So let's look at another example. So here we have a heterozygous brown coat cat and it's crossed with a white cat. So when I say cross, that just means it mates with or reproduces with. So the question is, what are the genotypic and phenotypic ratios of the next offspring? So first thing you need to do is always write the allele for each trait. So even though we already know this, it's good to, to write it down. That brown coat is represented by a capital B because it's dominant. And white coat is a recessive color and it's represented with a lowercase b. Now we have to find out the parent's genotype. One parent is heterozygous for brown coat. Since the parent is heterozygous, that means it has two different alleles, okay? And one um, letter is capitalized, one is lowercase. The next parent is um, a white cat. So we would write that as um, homozygous recessive. Homozygous meaning the same and recessive, they're both lowercase because in order to have white coat, it has to have two lowercase letters. Now you're going to need to fill in the outsides of the genotype with parent 1 and parent 2's genotype. So here for the one parent, it's heterozygous. I'm going to put a letter in each space. The other parent is homozygous recessive, so I'm going to put a lowercase b in each space. And now you're going to fill in the inside. So in this space here, one parent gives a capital B, the other parent gives a lowercase b. This space is the same. First parent gives this capital B, and then the other parent gives a lowercase b. This third spot here, one parent gives a lowercase b, while the other parent gives a lowercase b. And it's the same thing here. One parent gives a lowercase b, the other parent gives another lowercase b. So we have to find out the what the offspring will turn out to be, what the next kitten will have as a genotype. Well, now I see two different genotypes. I have a heterozygous genotype, and I see that it happens in two of the four boxes, or 50% of the time, if I wanted to write it in a fraction. So you need to write heterozygous equals, you can write fraction or the percent. I also see a different type of genotype here. It's homozygous recessive. Remember, homozygous is the same. Recessive means they're both lowercase. And I see it happening in two of the four boxes, or 50% of the time. So you need to write the genotype homozygous recessive equals the fraction is 2 out of 4 or 50 percent. So what does that mean for the genotype? That just means that the next time that these two parents have a kitten, that kitten will have a 50 percent chance of being heterozygous or it will have a 50 percent chance of being born homozygous recessive. So now let's take a look at the phenotype. What is the physical trait of the offspring? Will it have brown coat or white coat? Well, these two boxes here are heterozygous, okay? They both have one capital B. So that means these two boxes will represent the dominant trait of brown coat. These two boxes here are homozygous recessive. They only have lowercase or um, recessive alleles, and that represents white coat. So both of those boxes represent white coat. Well, how are we going to write this in a ratio? So I need you to write down brown coat equals two out of four. That means it happens in two of the four boxes or it happens 50% of the time. And white coat, same thing. It happens two out of the four boxes, okay, or 50% of the time. So what does that mean? When these two parents have a kitten, that kitten has a 50% chance of having a brown coat or it has a 50% chance of being born with a white coat. So let's take a look at another example. So in humans, the ability to taste PTC is dependent upon a dominant gene. And what PTC is, it's a non-toxic chemical, but it tastes really bitter. Now some people can taste it and other people won't be able to taste it. 
So here, a male is heterozygous for tasting PTC, marries a woman who is also heterozygous. What are the possible genotypes and phenotypes of their next child? So first, you need to write the allele for each trait. Since tasting PTC is dominant, it's going to get a capital letter. Now you can choose whatever letter. Let's choose letter, the letter T for taste PTC. So it's going to get a capital letter. Now the recessive trait is not being able to taste PTC. So since it's recessive, it's going to get a lowercase letter. We're still going to use T, but it, we're going to make it lowercase. Now we have to identify each parent's genotype. So the man is heterozygous and the woman is heterozygous too. So they should have a capital and a lowercase letter because remember heterozygous means two different alleles. So they need two different alleles here. Now we're going to write down the genotypes of each parent. So one parent is heterozygous, you put a letter in each um, space. The other parent is also heterozygous, put a letter in each space. And you're going to fill out the inside of the Punnett square. Now this box, it has um, one parent's giving a capital T, the other parent is also giving a capital T. So in this box we have homozygous dominant. Homozygous because they're both the same, dominant, they're both capital letters. In this box, we're going to have a capital T from one parent, but a lowercase t from the second parent. And this one will be, this genotype will be heterozygous. In this box here, we're going to have one capital letter from one parent and a lowercase letter from the other parent. And this one will be also heterozygous as a genotype. And then in the last box, one parent is giving a lowercase letter. The other parent is also giving a lowercase letter. This is homozygous recessive. Homozygous because they're the same, recessive because they're both lowercase. So now we're going to figure out what the genotype of the offspring are in a ratio. So here we have three different types of genotypes. So we have to um, separate them. I only see one um, homozygous dominant. I don't see this com combination of alleles anywhere else. So I'm going to write homozygous dominant, two capital T's, and it's equal to, the fraction is it happens one out of the four boxes, or 25% of the time. Now the next genotype that's available is heterozygous, and I see that this heterozygous genotype happens in two boxes. So I'm going to write heterozygous capital and lowercase t is equal to two of the four boxes or 50% of the time. The last genotype that's available is homozygous recessive. Now I only see it one of the four boxes. So I'm going to write homozygous recessive two lowercase t equal one out of four or in percent it would be 25%. So now we're going to take a look at what do these genotypes mean as a trait, okay? Um, does it represent tasting PTC or can't taste PTC? So in this first box here, okay, this should represent, yes, it, tastes, um, it can taste PTC because it has at least one capital letter. Well, I see that also in these two boxes here. They have one, at least one capital letter. So that represents the dominant trait of tasting PTC. So that means these three boxes shows that um, it has the ability to taste that bitter PTC. Well, this box doesn't have a capital letter. It only has recessive alleles, and that represents can't taste PTC. So in this case, there will be... Um, you, that person will not be able to taste PTC, won't taste that bitter taste. So how would we write this as a phenotypic ratio? Well, then we would write the traits, taste PTC or not tasting PTC. Well, tasting PTC, I see it happening in three of the four boxes, or 75% of the time. 
Okay, the phenotypic ratio for can't taste PTC, so I'd write that, can't taste PTC equals, only happens one of the four boxes, or if I put it in percent, 25%. So I want you to try this problem out um, on your own. So again, the ability to taste PTC, which is that non-toxic chemical that tastes bitter, it's dominant to not being able to taste PTC. So I want you to create a pun and square to show a woman who is heterozygous and a man who is homozygous for PTC tasting. So fill out all these parts. So now remember that um, we already used the allele capital T for tasting PTC since it's dominant. Lowercase t is recessive, um, so it's for can't taste PTC. Okay, so one person, the woman, is heterozygous, so she should have a capital and lowercase t. The man um, is, is homozygous for tasting PTC. So remember, homozygous means the same. Since he can taste PTC, both of his alleles should be capital T. We're going to take these letters um, and genotypes. We're going to put them on the outsides of the Punnett square. So one parent is heterozygous, the other parent is homozygous dominant, and then you're going to fill in the um, each box. So the inside represents the next child. So for the genotype, I see two of the four boxes are homozygous dominant, or 50%. Two out of the four boxes are heterozygous, or 50%. Now, because all of these boxes have at least one capital T, one dominant allele or letter, the phenotype is going to be able to taste PTC. So each box represents the ability to taste PTC. So how would we write it? Can, um, can taste PTC it is equal to 4 out of 4 of the boxes or 100% of the time?